Hi, this video deals with teaching large groups of students using Skype, recording your lessons. It is always a good idea to back up your lessons. So I use a program called Fast Tone Capture. It's easily installed and when you open the panel, you just press record. It also records audio. You could always send a, a video file to your students who have missed the lessons or whose connection wasn't stable. Adapting the textbook. Once you make sure that all of your students have got corresponding gadgets to carry out Skype lessons, uh, you choose a textbook and they usually come in PDF form. So it's a good idea to split them into little G JPEG images. To do that, you go online and for example, you could use a converter, online converter called PDF to go. Uh, you select the file and you upload it to the website. In my case, I'm using Hotspot 4. The interface here is in Russian, but uh, it's very clear what I'm doing. I'm uploading a file and then I press start. Once it has been un uploaded, it's being processed and it's converting the PDF into little JPEG files. I'm downloading the file now. In the left bottom corner, you see how the file is downloading onto my computer. And bingo, I got all of the files. So now I can send images of pages to my students. In this video, I decided to use an actual lesson I'm teaching. Now we are revising past models. And for a sake of convenience, I'm just going to deal with the could aspect of the grammar. In addition to what the book has got, I would like to use some extra materials. And when you're selecting extra materials in Skype, PowerPoint presentations are of great value. You could find them online easily. I'm just searching and there's the first search result I've got. That's ISL Collective, a very famous ESL website. You gotta register but it's for free and it's got tons of materials. And there's one PowerPoint that, as you see, I found, you could check out what's inside before you download it. It seems to be suiting the um, grammar topic we've got, could and also can. And you log in and download the PowerPoint. For Skype lessons, I decided to make folders, separate folders for each uh, separate lesson. And for the sake of convenience, I number the files. So in the name of the file, I actually write number one, which means this will be the first file I'll send to my students. Interactive exercises can also be very useful when you're teaching Skype. You could just send a link to your students, all you do is search for topic of your grammar, interactive exercise. And there's a little exercise that I have just found, it deals with could, multiple choice, and you could send a link and also display it on the screen while you're having a lesson. So I'm copying that link and I'm gonna save it in my folder. I'm going to also number it and write this is the second file I'm going to use in my lesson. So two online practice with a link of the exercise inside that I'm pasting here. So it could be easily sent to the students once we're on Skype and I will not lose time searching it online. Images are a great thing to use. I usually create little folders of images that represent vocabulary that we've studied with my students. And let me number that. Item three, images. Last lesson we had studied environment vocabulary. And there's a selection of pictures that represent our target vocabulary. Another great source for Skype teaching is a game called Kahoot. You go to a website called kahoot.it and you enter the topic 
that interest you. My search results display a lot of um, games on environment and I'm choosing one of them that I'm going to use in my Skype lesson. I press play and I hit challenge instead of a host live and the challenge actually saves the game providing me with a link that I can always send to my students. Um, so I copy the link and I paste it in a text document so I can use the link during my lesson. Kahoot IT is a site where you also have to register. It's for free and you can create your own questionnaires and um, online games. Very convenient tool. So item four, Kahoot. This process of copying and pasting is pretty much monotonous and mundane, but it really helps you during a Skype session. Another source is audios. You gotta have those prepared. Let's say the audios from the book. I got them stored as MP3 files. And to save me time during the lesson, uh, in, order, in order for me that not to search for the corresponding file, I just copy the file that I need into my lesson one folder and I number it correspondingly. That's going to be item five in the lesson. And of course, videos. You could find a great selection of those on YouTube. Just copy the link and again, copy paste use it in your lesson i'm going to number this as item six video and environment and paste the link of course And let us do a sample lesson. We hit new chat, create new chat. Let the Russian interface not confuse you. It's all pretty basic. Sample lesson, you name it, you choose an avatar. And in this lesson, I'm gonna use two students that I will add to my group. These two students are actually my own gadgets that are registered into different accounts. So the, these imaginary students will act in this sample lesson. Now we're ready to actually call the participants. Carry on, continue the call. I'm in. Hey, that's me. And in a few seconds, you will see the other gadgets of mine being added as students. There's one up there. You will see your students displayed as that. Uh, this student presumably decided not to use a video. The other one, which is my old Mickey Mouse toy, uh, has decided to use a video. So some of your students you will see um, as avatars, as images, some will be a live video icon and i'm ready to send the corresponding page of our lesson to both my students i use the skype messenger and now both of them will get the corresponding page from the textbook so we can do our exercise online And once we're done with this exercise in the main textbook, I'm going to use some of my extra resources. I'm going to share the screen um, and display the PowerPoint presentation that I have stored in my folder, item one. There it 
there's the PowerPoint. And um, when you share the screen, this is what the students can actually see in their Skype. The display of your screen. We start the game. I can nominate different students to give me answers. They choose the options. Some of which, which could be wrong. There's a right one. We go to the next page. Now, supposedly, we're done with the game. And I can now use my source number two. That's the interactive game. I copy the link. I paste it in the messenger. And I send it up to the students. I could choose to stop the call, get some rest, having set the time limit for the students to finish the exercise. And after enjoying a cup of tea, I could reconnect, go back to the uh, group chat. Now I'm sharing the screen again in order to display the um, pictures, the vocabulary items. And if students have questions about them, there's an, uh, another wonderful tool that you could use in Skype. You basically create an online whiteboard, creating a Word document, uh, lesson one vocabulary, I'll keep this file in the folder so I can always go back to it. I can send it to the students and I can use it to explain some vocabulary items uh, using examples also that they could refer to when they revise the lesson. Um, you could play with the format easily change the um, font size and right now we're sharing the screen so students can see what's going on you can also work on the vocabulary while giving them tasks to do with a time limit and when you're back you could always share the screen show them new vocab items uh, revise the next lesson. Very useful tool. Now, after we've done our revision, we can do a Kahoot game to consolidate the target vocabulary we've been revising and this is how Kahoot works you send everyone a link and once they click on the link that takes them to the Kahoot.it website and they will have to enter their nick their nickname it could be any name it does not require any prior registration there's Mickey entering his nick once you press OK go it takes you to the game and you answer the questions um, again having set a time limit I can wait or play with them and now comes the time for the audio track. I send them the audio. Another good idea would be to give instruction in written form if you type fast. Uh, this will keep them focused. You could have the task, the written task displayed with all the instructions. So if anyone um, gets distracted, they can always see what the task is. And finally, end of the lesson, uh, 
let's say you want to discuss, have a little cooler, discuss a video. So you use another instruction. You give the instruction prior to sending the, the video link and that allows them to focus on the question. Keep it in mind before you send the actual video. All this done is through screen sharing. Now you send the link that they can click, set a time limit, watch the video and have a little discussion afterwards. Well, we're done with all of our tasks. Our lesson is finished and I wish you good luck with yours.